Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to talk about the rearrangement inequality. So the rearrangement inequality is one, another inequality that you can use, for example, like the cauchy schwarz inequality to solve Olympiad inequalities. Unfortunately, I don't think that Olympiad inequalities will show up in Olympiads anymore from now on, but it's still worth it to talk about inequalities a bit because some problems, some algebra problems, may still use inequality ideas. So the rearrangement inequality states the following. Suppose you have uh, two sequences, let's call them an and bn, such that we have a1 is less than or equal to a2 is less than or equal to all the way to an, and same thing for b, uh, 2. So these numbers are not necessarily positive, they can be negative or positive. And also we have a permutation sigma. So what the permutation does is basically like if we have an initial number k, it maps it to, I don't know, another number like j. So in other words, if you have like a permutation from 1 to 6, then it's something like 1 maps to 1, 2 maps to 4, 3 maps to 3, 5 maps to 2, 4 maps to 6, 6 maps to 5. You get the idea. It's just something in which everything maps to a unique thing. So if we have this random permutation here, then the following inequality is true. a1b1 plus a2b2 plus all the way to anbn is greater than or equal to a1b sigma 1 plus a2b sigma 2 plus all the way to anb sigma n, which is also in turn greater than or equal to a1 b n plus a2 b n minus 1 plus da 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 all the way to a n b 1. So this looks might look a little bit daunting at first especially with this weird sigma notation here but actually it's not as confusing as it might seem to be at first. There's a very logical way to explain this. So Let's, let's suppose that you have, uh, you're, you're going to be uh, given some money, all right? And uh, they might give you some $20 bills, $10 bills, you have a $20 bills, $10 bills, $5 bills, $2 bills, and $1 bills. And the guy tells you that he's going to give you four of one type, three of another type, two of another type, one of another type, and zero of another type. So the question is, what is the maximum possible money you can get and what is the minimum possible money you can get? Well, well, clearly we want to have the higher valued bills as the higher number, right? We want more higher valued bills in order to maximize our money. So if we want to make a maximum, so if we want to make a maximum, then we obviously want there to be four $20 bills, three $10 bills, two five dollar bills, one two dollar bill, and zero one dollar bill. Now, suppose instead we wanted to find the minimum. Then what would we do? Well, well, minimum is just as easy intuitively as maximum because this time we want the least number of high value bills and the most number of low value bills. So in this case, to find the minimum, we want uh, four one dollar bills, three two dollar bills, two five dollar bills, one ten dollar bill, and zero twenty dollar bills. So this way we can minimize it. And finally, let's suppose that we just randomly pick, all right? We just randomly pick just whatever whatever pleases us. Well, no matter how we randomly pick, we are guaranteed that the, uh, the value of the money that we get will be less than or equal to the maximum possible and greater than or equal to the minimum possible. So this random is precisely this sigma stuff in the middle. It's just some random uh, way to match the number of values to the dollar bill values. So this inequality actually just says to maximize this, match big with big, to minimize it, match big with small, and anything in between is always going to be between these two values. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see an application. 
All right, let's take a look at this problem. This is actually a very famous inequality, and it is very doable using rearrangement inequality. So we have uh, a, b, c, b positive real such that a plus b plus c equals 3, and we want to prove that a squared b plus b squared c plus c squared a plus a, b, c is less than or equal to 4. So this type of inequality, well, it's not symmetric. It's only cyclic, so we don't really like that. It's... It's not very nice to bash. So in this case, let's see what rearrangement inequality might do for us. So first off, since this is not homogeneous, the right-hand side has degree 0 while the left-hand side has degree 3, let's first make it homogeneous. So this way we can also get rid of the condition, which might be nice. So the left-hand side is still as usual, and now with the right-hand side, well, we want to multiply everything by a plus b plus c over 3, all that cubed. So multiply by a plus b plus c cubed over 27. Now everything is homogenized, and we no longer need the condition a plus b plus c equals 3. So now we've got to prove this for abc being positive reals. So let's use rearrangement inequality on a, the sequence abc and a, b, b, c, c, a, as we can see right here. So the first issue is that in order to use rearrangement inequality, first we got to have some sort of order in the variables. Right now, a, b, and c aren't very ordered, and we want to create some sort of order in them in order to use it. So without loss of generality, since this inequality is cyclic, we can say without loss of generality, let the maximum of a, b, c, b, a. But that's all we can do. We can't order b and c. But since we can't order b and c, we might as well just use casework. So case one, we have a is greater than or equal to b, greater than or equal to c. In this case, a, b, c are ordered from highest to lowest, and a, b, a, c, and b, c are ordered from highest to lowest. So in this case, we have that a squared b plus b squared c plus oops plus c squared a is less than or equal to a squared b plus a c times b is a b c plus c squared b. So if we add another a b c, which is what we have on the left hand side, this turns into a squared b. The left hand side is less than or equal to this stuff. And well, we see that we can factor a b out immediately right now, so let's do that. a squared plus ac plus c squared plus ac. Simplify a little bit. a squared plus 2ac plus c squared. Oh, that's a perfect square, so let's do that. a plus c squared. All right, and now we want to prove that this thing is less than or equal to 4 over 27 a plus b plus c cubed. So now I think the rest of the solution will become clear because, all right, we have a b, we have an a plus c, so let's substitute a plus c equals x or something like that. So bx squared is less than or equal to 4 over 27 times b plus x cubed. And now it's time for some AMGM. So let's move this down a little bit. This is a question mark still. All right. So we have a B plus X is equal to B plus one half X plus one half X cubed over three. Let's just put the 27 on the inside. So the right hand side is equal to that, right? And now we apply AMGM on the inside to get this is greater than or equal to 4 times the cube root of b times 1 half x times 1 half x, all that cubed, which is equal to, well, the cubed and cube root cancel out. We have a b times 1 half x times 1 half x times 4, which is bx squared, which is exactly what we were trying to prove right here. So we have that this first case is done. 
So now on to case two. Case two, we have A greater than or equal to C greater than or equal to B. So that means A, C, B is ordered like that. And A, B, or A, C, sorry. A, C, A, B, and B, C are similarly ordered. All right. So now in this case, we have the inequality. A squared B plus B squared C plus C squared A is less than or equal to A squared C plus A, B, C plus B squared C. And we add uh, A, B, C at the end to match the left-hand side. And now we can simplify A squared. Well, this, there's a C that factors out. So A squared plus A, B plus B squared plus A, B, which is equal to C times A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, which is equal to C times A plus B squared. And now look, this becomes exactly the same thing as what we want to prove previously, right here. Except for in this case, we have an interchange of variables. In this case, we don't have B on the outside, but we have C on the outside, but the proof will be exactly the same. So in both cases, we have proved the inequality using rearrangement. So we are done. Today we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be proving an interesting property. So given any volume that tapers to a point with any shape with an arbitrary base, 